In this orchestral sketch, I left functional harmony behind me. I entered a new world, the world of modes, and in this case, Dorian. Hi there, this is David, also known as Ghost Rider. If you have followed me along on this channel, you know that I lack a theoretical music background. So when someone has said this a year ago, when I started with Staffbot and doing these orchestral sketches and writing notes on virtual paper, I would not have understood many of it. But doing these orchestral sketches tingles my curiosity and it pushes me towards unknown territory and oh my god, I love it. And I hope you enjoy this journey too. So enough introduction, let's go to Stavba, to the eight bars I wrote in Dorian. But not before we had a listen to the piano line and the orchestrated version I ended up with. To keep it simple, for myself I wrote a simple melody line in D Dorian. Why D Dorian? Well, it only uses the white keys on the piano, from D to D. So D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Now I have learned on this journey that when you write in modes, you have to hammer out the tonic, in this case the D and make use of the color tone, and for D Dorian, that's B. Doing that in a consistent way will make sure that the listener hears that typical Dorian sound, and not a C major scale or a D minor scale, and that's very important. When I figured out the basic melody line behind the piano, I added some chord tones, and two arpeggio effects to make it a little bit more interesting. Then I repeated the whole thing in E Dorian, again hammering out the tonic, the E, and making use of the color tone, in this case C sharp. I realized that a lot of music theory lies underneath this simple explanation. I'm not going to elaborate on that in this video, but feel free to ask anything in the comments below. Let's continue with the next step. In the second step of this sketch, I have tried to print in the tonic even more. I added a rhythmic part in the higher range, first on the D and in the last four bars on the E. To be honest, I already had flutes in mind when I wrote this, but we will come to that in a second when we have a look at the orchestrated version. Another element I added are chords on the third beat of the measure. This way I kept the maximum focus on the tonic on the first beat and I strengthened it even more by giving the tonic some extra attention with the chords on the third beat. Let's have a quick listen and continue with the last step of the piano sketch. Currently I'm practicing a new work for my piano lessons, with an Alberti bass, or in Dutch, Albertijnse bass. I never heard of that fellow until my piano teacher told me about him. I can imagine you haven't too, but his accompaniment is everywhere in music. What am I talking about? Well, the Alberti bass is a kind of broken chord, 
or arpeggiated accompaniment, where the notes of the chord are presented in the order lowest, highest, middle, highest, just like I did here. We composers use that all the time, and we thank that to Mr. Alberti. And now you know. The other element I added is a simple motif, on the parts where the melody rests to grab your attention, or as a support when the melody continues. And that all completes this piano sketch. Let's have a listening and continue with the next step, which is about the orchestration. I always enjoyed this step very much. Orchestrating a piano sketch is a magical process and sometimes a very frustrating process too, but in this case it worked out pretty nice. So what have I done? And let's start with the strings. The main melody went to the violins one. I tried other instruments, but they didn't hold it for me. The bass line obviously went to the double basses, in pizzicato style with a pizzicato bar talk on the last note of the first phrase. I love to use such an accent. The chords on the third beat of the measure went to the violins too, the violas and the violoncello, with a dynamic marking going from mezzo piano to a bit louder, and that gives a nice movement in the string section. The flutes played a rhythmic part with staccato and tenuto articulations, with a legato run to connect the two phrases of D Dorian and E Dorian. The oboes and clarinets double each other on the motif I wrote, and the bassoons support the double basses with staccato notes in the low range. To make it all a little bit more excited I added two percussion instruments, the crotalis and the xylophone. Both accentuate the tonic again. And last but not least, the harp, the final element in this orchestral sketch. Let's listen one more time to it from out of my DAW Logic Pro, where I have used my favorite libraries to rebuild this orchestral sketch. I hope you enjoyed this orchestral sketch in Dorian and all the others that I did before and if you did give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already and don't forget to ding that bell if you want to be notified when I upload a new orchestral sketch or a video about orchestration, creating realistic orchestral mockups, music production and other related topics. And hopefully I see you with the next one.